Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to dress your age so you look age appropriate and not out of line. <laughs> First of all, why is it important to dress your age? Probably you've seen the guy who is in his 50s wearing clothes that his teenage son wears. On the other hand, you may have seen a teenager who's decked out with a fedora hat and a three-piece suit and it just looks odd. So why is it important to dress your age? Well, the saying that you're really only as old as you feel really doesn't hold up when it comes to appearances. No one ever looked at George Clooney or Richard Gere and said, oh wow, that gray hair looks terrible on them. However, if they would put on shorts, flip-flops, and a t-shirt, it just doesn't suit their age. Of course, every once in a while, you find people with a very developed style and it's very unique to them and they maintain it throughout their life. In that case, you just dress the way you are and express yourself. For all others, it pays to have certain guidelines based on the age group you're in. Of course, there's always leeway to break the rules, but I'm a firm believer that you have to master all the rules first before you can break them stylishly. In today's video, we discuss the age group of under 20, the early 20s, 25 to mid 30s, mid 30s to mid 40s, mid 40s to 65, and 65 and up. To get right to your age group, you can click on the link underneath the video so you don't have to watch something that you're not interested in. First, let's discuss guys under 20. In that age group, most people are extremely casual and sometimes they're even outright sloppy. So if you wanna be dressed better than your peers in that age group, you really don't have to do that much to stand out from the crowd. The basic idea for this age group is casual layering. So unless you go to a job interview, and if you wanna learn more about what to wear then, please check out this video, you can go without a jacket and without a tie. Of course, if you feel like you wanna dress up and you wanna have a blazer combination or maybe even a suit, feel free to do that, but it shouldn't be your everyday outfit. Otherwise, it may alienate you from your peers. Most men under 20 wear jeans. So if you just grab a pair of chinos or corduroys, you immediately stand out. And if you wanna learn more about the intricacies of those garments, check out our chino guide on the website, as well as our corduroy video. A lot of teenagers like to wear extremely skinny, tight pants. I think a slim fit that highlights the line of your leg is very flattering, and it suits you, especially if you're a slim built. If for some reason you have big thighs, just the way I do, I suggest to go with pleated trousers or fuller cut trousers that will just highlight and flatter you more. If you don't wanna wear a jacket, dress shirts can really help you to elevate your style. I suggest to have some plaids, checks, and maybe stripes that are very versatile. Alternatively, add some Oxford shirts. To learn more about those, check out our guide on the website. Definitely skip the baseball cap. It makes you look immature. Instead, if you wanna wear a hat, maybe consider a flat cap in the fall winter season. As layering is very important in your age group, I suggest you go with sweaters because they keep you warm in the winter. They add a little bulk to your build, which easily comes off as muscles, and they keep you warm. If you're up for a cardigan, you can even take it off if it's too hot, and that makes you very flexible, casual, but well-dressed. The classic sweater style is a crew neck. If you wanna wear a tie with it, I suggest you get a V-neck because it accentuates the look of the tie. And if you wanna go more casual, you can even go for a Henley shirt. If you want a very classic look, I suggest you go with either a cotton or merino wool, which is rather thin and can be worn in transitional periods. If you want a more preppy look, you can go for more of a tennis sweater style in bolder colors, maybe some contrasting colors, white with blue, green with red, and maybe even some braiding in the knit. Most of your peers will probably wear Nike shoes or some form of sneakers. If you wanna stand out, up your level on the shoes, but still stay casual, I suggest wearing a driving mock in the summer, maybe a pair of boat shoes, maybe a pair of suede shoes because they make it more soft and casual. In the winter, you can go for a pair of chukka boots and you can learn all about them in our chukka boots guide on the website. Running shoes should be reserved for athletic wear only. And if you wanna have a nice pair of leather sneakers, that's totally fine and it has its place in the wardrobe when you go out clubbing or whenever you feel it's appropriate. When it comes to watches, I think simplistic watches are really great for younger guys and you can have simple ones that don't break the bank. However, I suggest you stay clear of really huge watches because they don't look good on your small wrists 
Rather go with something smaller that's timeless and more proportional to your physique. If you're in your early to mid 20s, chances are you may just get out of college, you get your first job, and in that case, it pays to have at least one suit that you can wear for interview purposes. Again, check out the video guide on our website that helps you to dress to the tee. If you're in a sales position or if you're in a white collar profession, you will definitely need a lot more suits than one. If you're not, I suggest to invest more in combinations. Maybe of a blazer would be a great first garment to start. And overall, I suggest you check out our guide on the 10 clothing items that every man should have because that's the foundation of your wardrobe that will last your lifetime and you'll get a lot of wear out of it because it's very versatile and flexible. In order to give you a greater variety in combining things, I urge you to stay clear of black suits or black jackets. Instead, go with dark charcoal gray or navy blue because they look better, more office appropriate, and you will be able to combine it with a lot more than a black garment. For more details, check out my video on why black is the number one overrated color in menswear. For casual wear, you can still have a few pair of jeans. However, I suggest to go more with chinos. In the summer, you can have brighter colors such as Nantucket red or maybe a light baby blue. You can also look into seersucker, which is not only comfortable in summer, but also more preppy and stylish. If you have a mid-gray suit, you can also wear the slacks and combine them with your blazer and other items in your wardrobe, so it pays to have these basics. In terms of accessories, I think one thing that really sets men apart is the choice of their wallet, and to invest in a nice leather gentleman's wallet is really the next step up. It should not bulge, and it should have enough slots for your carts and everything that you need. Now is also the time to invest in one or two dress watches if you would like to wear watches. Personally, I'm not a watch guy and so I don't wear them. That's maybe one of my personal hallmarks or anti-style hallmarks. But if you like watches, I think a simplistic dress watch round, maybe with a black or white dial, is really helpful. If you still have some old band t-shirts, you can still wear them and in a casual setting with friends, but it's definitely nothing you want to wear to work. In terms of dress shoes, it's now time to leave the Alfani, Calvin Klein, Cole Haan, and Johnson Murphy behind and elevate to something nice that's quality that will last you. I urge you to watch the video on the comparison of $100 versus $500 shoes to see where you can find some value. And if that's too much for you, you can even get a great pair of shoes for $200, but you're not gonna find it at the mall. When it comes to casual shoes, I think leather is really nice. I'd stay clear of Skechers or tennis shoes or Chuck Converse's because they're just not in line with a dapper outfit. Of course, you're traveling somewhere and you're comfortable in them. I get it, wear them. But if you want to stand out from the crowd and take it a step up, I would leave them behind. If you're in your mid-20s to mid or late 30s, chances are you've had your first job, you moved out of the dorms, you have your own apartment, you may are still looking for an insignificant other, you may already find someone, you may have children, you may be in the suburbs, but life has changed dramatically for you ever since you were in your 20s. A great wardrobe staple is probably an Oxford shirt, especially with a button-down collar. It's something that you can still wear either casually or combined with a jacket or suit. Polo shirts are nice if you maybe want to play golf or hang out with your children on the weekend, but they're not something you should wear to the office, not even on casual Fridays. The advantage of dress shirts over sweaters is that you can combine them with a lot more. You can wear them with vests, you can wear them with cardigans, and suits versus polos are more reserved for casual outings only. Rather than just focusing on color, it can really help to also look into texture. For example, here I'm wearing a silk knit-tie, which is a very different texture than the jacket that is made of wool, which is different again from the linen pocket square or the boutonniere. If you have a basic wardrobe with dark colors, white shirts, light blue shirts, you can add color dashes such as maybe your pair of socks or your tie or your pocket square and just make outfits unique and make you stand out and recognizable. It's very nice to see when people recognize you as the well-dressed guy. If you want a little preppy style, it can look really great to have a rep style tie with a blazer and a bold pocket square because it still shows that you're young but that you also know the rules of dressing well. Chances are you have a little more money in your pocket now and so it pays to expand your shoe collection and go beyond the first two or three pairs that you had before. I suggest to start with an Oxford or a Derby shoe. Now you can look into maybe a double monk, maybe a single monk, maybe a loafer, or whatever it is that works for your wardrobe. 
Sweaters are still a great item for casual wear, not so much at the office. I know, chances are you might think that neckwear is only for the office. I firmly believe that you should reconsider that point of view because a nice necktie, or especially a bow tie, can quickly become a hallmark and make you stand out in a positive way that will always reflect well on you. In the summer, consider to go with some sailing shorts, maybe worn an Oxford shirts or polo shirts, and boat shoes. It makes for a very preppy look. So you're in mid 40s to about 65, you are still young and you feel young and you're probably very comfortable at this stage in your life and as such, you can still wear all the things that you want to wear, but when in doubt, you should always tone it down a little bit, go with more muted colors rather than bold bright ones. Instead of using bolder colors to differentiate your outfit, I suggest to go with different textures and especially subtle patterns. You can go with window panes instead of solids herringbones, they're not just finer, but bigger. Maybe a classic Prince of Wales check that is larger in black and white that goes well with your gray hair. These are all things that can really help you develop an outfit that is very age appropriate, yet very stylish. You may or may not have or want to wear suits at work, but during your off hours, I suggest you go with odd combinations, going with a sport coat in single-breasted or double-breasted, maybe a tweed jacket in the winter, and it just is very age appropriate for this stage of your life. Rather than going with sweaters, I would stick with odd vests or simple waistcoats, and you can get them single-breasted, maybe double-breasted, and they're fantastic because you can unbutton them, they don't add bulk in the sleeves, and they can really help to make your outfits stand out because most other men don't wear them. If you wear them, make sure to wear them with either suspenders or a regular waistband, but skip the belt because it will make the bottom of your vest bulge. If you feel like the darker, more muted tones of your outfit are too old looking and you wanna be a little more youthful, I suggest to go with a bolder pocket square, maybe a bolder necktie, socks, or a boutonniere. It's very easy to change the look of an entire outfit with just those few items. Of course, you don't need all of those together. You can just go with one or two at a time. It's also fun to maybe combine your pocket squares with your tie or with your socks because that coordinates and it's just a well-rounded outfit. If you wanna deviate from the classic blue, red, and yellow, I suggest to go with something like burnt orange or maybe eggplant purple, maybe a little lighter, or olive green. They're all great colors that go well in your age group. As you get older, you might have more issues with your feet and if you want something softer, I suggest to go with slimmer soles and more casual shoes, such as loafers and driving mocks during your off time, maybe derbies if you go to the office, and you can leave the Oxfords behind if they're just too tight for your foot. I can oftentimes see men wear white tennis socks with white sneakers or tennis shoes, and that's just a look that makes you look extremely old. Because of that, I suggest you ban them from your wardrobe because you don't want to look older than you actually are. If you're 65 and up, you're likely retired or you're looking forward to retirement. You either spend your days on a golf course or hang out with friends, playing cards, working at the wood shop. And at that stage of your life, the degree of formality goes down. Now is the time to add sweaters back into your wardrobe, maybe skip the blazer, unless you really like to dress up. However, one thing I notice a lot is that men change their physique, yet the wardrobe remains the same, and it sometimes makes them look quite dated. For example, men who wear the height of formality in the 90s now look very outdated with a large padded shoulders and extremely wide cut trousers with a low rise. If you are into a certain fashion period, like the 30s, and you maintain that style, it can work really well. But if you just wear whatever you had 20, 25 years ago, chances are it's worn out or it just doesn't look as well suited to you anymore as it used to. Therefore, it makes sense to revalue the wardrobe and see that everything just fits the way it should. Ideally, you have someone else help you with that because you yourself may not be the best judge. Shoes need to be more comfortable, of course, and you can still get elegant casual shoes that are not tennis shoes. You can also go with inserts that help you be physically comfortable. If you need walking assistance, instead of the typical old school cane, you can go with a nice, Malacca cane, maybe with a sterling silver handle, or even ivory if you find it vintage. Having a stylish cane is not just helpful, but it really elevates you from all the others with their cheap, bulky little metal ones that just look plain ugly. Depending on how heavy you are, 
it may make sense to get pants with pleats. They give you more room of movement and are simply more comfortable. At this stage, I suggest you avoid bold patterns in menswear as well as bold colors. Go with smaller patterns for your ties if you want to wear them and just keep it simple. Don't be afraid of layering and even lighter colors, especially if you have white hair by now, because having more earth tones with less stark of a contrast helps you to create a well-rounded outfit. If you still have a high contrast between your skin and your hair, you can also go with strong contrast colors, such as a white shirt with a dark suit. Otherwise, maybe go with a somewhat gray suit and a light blue or maybe cream shirt rather than strong white. Of course, suits should only be reserved for the formal occasions. If you still wanna be stylish and comfortable, you can look into knitted jackets, which give you a great range of movement. But if you can afford a custom-made garment from a very soft fabric, maybe something like cashmere, it's very comfortable, pretty much like a sweater. It looks a lot more dapper and it will help you look younger. If you can still wear Goodyear welted shoes, I suggest you go with something that really suits the rest of your wardrobe. If you wanna go bolder, maybe consider a pair of two-tone wingtips, but for most men in your age group, I suggest to keep it simple and brown because it combines very well and it's still very classic and timeless. I just turned 33 and so in this video, I'm wearing a blazer, which is part of a suit. It's navy, it's double-breasted and it has a faint window pane. It's from Ralph Lauren Purple Label that I bought years ago on eBay and I can still wear it. I'm pairing it with an unusual striped shirt in yellow and a dark stripe. To add a little more boldness to it, I have a two-tone pink and dark charcoal silk knit tie from Fort Belvedere, which I pair with a yellow linen pocket square with yellow X stitches from Fort Belvedere. And as you can see, there is just a light contrast, but it goes well with the stripes of my shirt. And the boutonniere is a dark purple pinkish that goes well with my knit tie. My pants are custom tailored in a sharkskin mid gray fabric. They have inverted pleats, double pleats, because I have a big bum and big thighs, and that's what I need. I always like cuffs or turnips because in a lightweight fabric, they help you pull the pants down and create a clean line. The socks are Gray, they provide a little bit of contrast to the pants and they have nice clocks, so they're very office appropriate. I'm wearing them with black semi brug Oxfords from Pettywear in England. And overall, it's a very classic office outfit. However, because of my shirt and my tie, it looks a lot more youthful. If I would wear that same thing with a striped red tie and a light blue shirt or a maybe white shirt, it would look a lot more professional. The cufflinks I'm wearing here right now are gold monkey fist cufflinks from Fort Belvedere. They're very timeless and I designed them because I never liked the silk knots that you could get, but I wanted something that was an actual knot from nautical things and not just a fantasy product, but something that was timeless and sophisticated. The ring I'm wearing is 14 karat yellow gold that matches my cufflinks and it has a citrine stone. I found it at a vintage flea market in Boston. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to our email newsletter so stuff like this comes right to your inbox. Also stay tuned for videos on how to dress younger than your age and how to look more mature. <laughs>